Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Watching this movie, it felt exactly how I thought it would watching the trailers. The only aspect that was differing for me from watching the trailers to the movie was that although it's an Ant-Man movie, which they're known to be more comedic, there is a lot of silliness in this movie wrapped around the core of a story that is actually quite compelling and really well done and scary in some ways. Yeah, I thought that this movie was fine. Um, it elevated some of the characters and then in others you're kind of just like, okay, I understand, like, sure that you wanted to go that way, but it kind of derails from, I, I kept wanting to be like, let's go back to what we are here for um, in this story. And Jonathan Majors is definitely a standout, which is what you kind of need because he is, you know, the top dog. He's going to be, he's Kang. So if knowing who Kang is from the comic books and stuff, you, you kind of want somebody who can kind of fulfill that and make you feel like, oh, he can be a serious threat. And I think he does that very well in this movie. It just feels like there was I said, like diminishing returns when it came to certain things that happened and you're kind of just like no give him more like Jonathan Majors was kind of playing in his own <laughs> movie at times it felt like. Janet in this movie is fantastic especially when she's uh, on screen with Kang the Conqueror and their story is quite compelling and it, it, the, the core the heroes are definitely what I want to see. They, I want to follow their story. I want them to make it through to the end. I want to see them overcome any obstacles. But I feel like everybody that was surrounding them was so silly and the kids are going to love it. I'm surprised there weren't fart jokes, but if there was a, an equivalent of a fart joke in the quantum realm, they figured it out just visually. It's almost like when they designed the quantum realm, they threw whatever they could at the wall and whatever stuck is what they pick, literally, jelly. Yeah, I will say that when it comes to certain things that you're trying to take from, uh, like adaptation from a comic book onto the big screen or little screen, wherever you want to get that screen, live action form, uh, it sometimes doesn't translate very well. And maybe Marvel needs to like not try to do like certain things and just kind of stick to kind of the core stuff. Yeah, they, uh, they, they swing for the fences on certain aspects, visually, comedically, and it did definitely lower the quality in my eyes, certain aspects of the Ant-Man story because they went for jokes versus a little more serious. Now it's more on the level, in my opinion, of Ragnarok in terms of comedy than it is on Thor Love and Thunder. And I feel like, you know, if you are okay with the comedy levels of Ragnarok, you're gonna be fine with this one. It was fine, we laughed and chuckled at certain aspects, but it was heavy handed for the most part. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I think that I respect like what they were trying to do because you always kind of want to try to push the boundaries a little bit and not kind of stick to the same formula because at the same time that kind of gets boring too uh, but sometimes it doesn't always stick. Cassie was great as an addition um, yeah. into the the ant family uh, and I can't wait to see what they do with her character in the future and I am excited to see what's to come. Speaking of which there is a mid credit scene and a post credit scene. We had more of a reaction for the post credit scene. Yeah. So definitely <laughs> stick around for that. And I'm, you know, it, this is a springboard. We're stepping off into the new phase and it's a multiversal phase. Yeah. And this one, although very much touches on what we could expect in the upcoming world of the MCU, it's still, it's a very small story, an intimate story of Kang and where we started and where we're more than likely going to end up. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. I enjoyed that story quite a bit, especially because Jonathan Majors definitely killed it and I can't wait to see what they do more with him. Yes. Christoph Beck's score, there was a theme used from the Ant-Man movies, which I appreciated, but I didn't really hear anything else that stood out. I'm still playing the trailer music that they used in my head, which in my opinion was better than what's in the movie. And I feel like the Scott Lang aspect of the story, giving us an education on where he's been post Endgame, 
was fantastic. I loved what they did there. There is some really fun moments uh, in that part of the storytelling that I was very happy to see. See, it's interesting. So I enjoyed the music in this one versus some of the, the other Ant-Man movies. I feel like he kind of elevated a little bit more, but mainly just on the Ant-Man theme or just kind of like the core of the Ant-Man theme. Um, and then like the, when they played in the end credits, uh, I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Sure, but guys, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, we know you're all excited to see it. What are you most excited for? What are you hoping? What are you speculating? Let us know in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Discord. All the social networking, Jin Joins, so you know where they are. Kick into the party, fuel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Check out the other reactions we have going on right now. Last of Us is kicking our butt right now, so definitely check out those reactions. But thank you so much, and as always, now it's time to say goodbye. And this party is over. Bye. Bye.